Do you guys remember this? I remember this. It wasn't exactly the best work. In fact, the part was pretty abysmal. A lot of this paint transferred to the part and it generally stuck and wouldn't release. The mould came off the backing board before the part came off the mould. It just wasn't really a good day and it wasn't the best work I've ever done. At the end of this video, I said I'd um, investigate a chemical mould release. Uh, and I've finally found one and that I can buy in a relatively small quantity and not spend an arm and a leg doing so. Uh, so what we're going to do in this video here is we're going to take this piece, which is painted in the same paint that I was using on this piece here, we're going to divide it into a couple of sections and we're going to have a very unscientific look at how different mould releases work. So we're going to use four different mould releases, or technically three mould releases and one without any release, just so we have a control, because while I'm going unscientific, I'm not a barbarian. And we're going to just apply some wet layup material to this, see how they come off at the end, and uh, I'll give you a qualitative assessment of what I, whether I think this works or not. So the combinations of release agents we're using here, we're going to use this corner here as a control. This side over here is going to be our um, chemical release agent spray. Uh, so this is stoner thermoset mold release, um, epoxy is a thermoset. It should work. It says it does, so we'll see how it goes. Over this side we're going to be using plain old ordinary wax, which is what we used on the uh, part that failed last time. And then this part here, we're going to use wax plus PVA, just because that's you know, the gold standard for making things release if you're concerned about them not releasing. Just going to mask off the other areas so we don't get any overspray from the, from the uh, chemical release. Yeah, I'd hate to contaminate my test. Might release too good then. All right, so we're outside in our spray area. Um, I've never used this before, I've never used chemical release, in case you can't tell, it's the whole point of me doing this. And I read the instructions because that's the first thing you should always do. And just so you guys understand what it says, it says shake well, done, hold it 10 to 12 inches, what's that, 30 centimeters metric. Apply a thin mist coating on mold surface best results. So that concerned me, there's a single coating, doesn't say anything about rubbing it on. I've gone looking for some more information, I couldn't find any more information. So we're going to give that a go as it's written on the label and we'll see how it turns out. So I'm going to put one thin mist coating from about 30 centimeters away onto that and hopefully it works. I'm going to call that a thin mist coating. I really don't trust it. So it's taking me a lot of self-control not to rub this in and I'm not going to do it because the can did not say to rub it, it said just spray it on. So I'm just leaving that as it is. Uh, it does smell a lot like wax, actually, so I'm really curious to what, know what's in it. It's got no silicons, apparently, which is good because silicon inhibits um, bonding and cures of, of composites, um, but it does realistically just smell like a liquid wax. Anyway, so what we're going to do here is we're going to start applying our actual wax to our wax um, and our wax plus PVA sections. I used five coats of wax on this part here, so we're going to use five coats of wax on this part here. And that's the fifth coat done, and just uh, being buffed off now, so I have to leave another half an hour to cure. So there's a couple of things I've noticed already from doing this. The first one is that buffing this wax and putting it on and taking it off again, that's just a real pain. It takes a lot of time. You know, it's been over, it's been over two and a half hours from when we did the first coat. You've got to wait five minutes after you put it on, uh, then give it a buff, and then wait half an hour after that before it's ready for the next coat or for usage. So, you know, even though I've just done the fifth coat now, it still requires at least half an hour of waiting before we can do the actual uh, layup. Or in this case, half an hour before I can put the PVA on the PVA part, and then we can do the actual layup. So you might be able to see here that this um, spray side of things has actually gone really hazy. Um, it actually looks quite thick, so I think that I've probably put too much of it on. It's going to work in its favour. But I might have to do this whole thing again with just the spray and look at um, how much spray we put on, and also look at um, giving it a bit of a wipe in because it seems kind of um, splotchy. And you can see here there's a bit of a, a discoloration, and that's where the plastic touched it as I pulled it across. So I'm not sure how it's going to work, but we'll see what comes of it. We've now applied all of our surface treatments to the four quadrants, or well, the three quadrants plus our control. Um, you might be able to see here that the spray's actually gone quite. Uh, 
quite opaque. It's like almost like a powdery kind of surface. Um, it's meant to be a semi-permanent release. So I don't know if you can just wipe that off and then whatever's left behind is good or not. Again, I'm just following what it says on the instructions. Instructions say spray a light coat and then use. So I sprayed a light coat, it's dried and I'm using. Uh, the surface finish on the PVA is mediocre. I don't really like PVA. If you spray it, it's okay. But you saw when I did the bonnet a while ago that you know, I had some little bits and pieces left in that as well and that was a pain. Uh, the wax, you can barely tell it's there, but it took a lot of labor to get it on. And then the control, well, that's just the control. So far, the really good thing about this spray is it took next to no effort. It was literally just spray and it was done in one go. Got fiberglass here. I'm using fiberglass so that I can see if anything pulls off, any paint pulls off. If I use carbon, you get black on black and I won't see anything. But the fiberglass will allow it. All we're going to do is paint the surface down a little bit, add the glass, then do a wet layout on the, on the glass. All I'm doing is just brushing some resin on first and adding the fiberglass. It's the same technique I used uh, when I made the last part that had the problems. So I'm just trying to replicate all those same things and just see what we can do with it. I have no idea why I just cut that. What we can do now is let that cure up. Get it back and this is our time to set up. So uh, let's start just pulling the peel ply off and see what we've got. Not the best sign. Except for wax. That's also not the best sign in the slightest. That's completely stuck to it. Brilliant. Control. Just peeled right off. I feel I say this way too much in my videos, but this did not go as I intended it to. It really looks like the, the reactivity between the melamine and the paint was lower than the um, epoxy and the paint with surface or release agent um, on the surface. That's disappointing. Um, it's something I really want to revisit at the later stage because uh, this paint caused problems before and it didn't come off last time. So you know, we know the paint can stick to things. It just might have been a bad surface uh, to use or a bad surface preparation. I did clean it, whatever. So we'll move this out of the way. And we have done this one instead. So this has been done up in a very similar manner to the previous one. Uh, we have the spray here, our spray release agent, we have plain wax up here, we have wax and PVA over here, and because I didn't want to sacrifice a piece of my mirror with nothing at all, I've actually put release agent on here and then wiped it down. You might be able to see through the edges here where there was, or well, there is release agent, but it's just been wiped off. So let's get cracking onto it. Wax and PVA came right off. So, so all four of those come off pretty easily, from easiest to hardest because it's a qualitative assessment. The uh, wax and PVA came off the simplest. As I was pulling the peel ply off there, you saw that just pop straight off. Um, the back end of that now needs a rinse just to get rid of whatever PVA is left on it. Um, from there, the uh, spray um, chemical release agent did the next best. It was actually partially peeling off when I was pulling the peel ply off. Um, that was pretty good. And then the, um, the wax and then the chemical with a spray and wipe um, seemed to be, you know, about on par with one another. Um, maybe bordering slightly better on the spray and wipe side of things. 
Um, what's interesting now is that this textured surface that you can see around the edge here actually isn't here anymore um, on the spray one. It looks pretty flat and everything. Yeah, the, the can here does say that you can get multiple can multiple releases per application, around about there, uh, which means that even though that it's no longer textured and smooth like it was over this side, that should still be a good surface for release. So that might be worth trying, but it also probably indicates why that this whole thing popped off pretty easily uh, on the spray and then wipe off. The next thing to have a look at is the back side of these parts and just to assess uh, how they actually look and if there's any imperfections being pulled into them. So starting with our spray and uh, wipe one, yeah, that's almost a mirror finish there. There's a couple of like little air bubbles and bits and pieces in it um, that have been you know, introduced by my poor layup. But you know, we can reflect the light off that. That's actually a really, really nice, smooth, flat part um, that's taken off the surface of the mold quite well. So if I look at our wax and PVA, and we have bits of PVA hanging off the edge there. That's fine. You know, again, that's a smooth, flat, mirror-like part. Uh, but this also now needs to be washed. So you can see there's little ripples here on the PVA now that I've washed it off. This is actually just because of the hand application of the PVA caused different layer thicknesses on the glass. Um, so now that we've removed the PVA from it, uh, there's very smart, minor uh, imperfections in that bottom there. That's nothing a minor sand, a bit of paint wouldn't fix if you were painting this part. Uh, but that is another operation that's required if you're trying to get something you know, reasonably flat. Um, an improvement would have been to spray the PVA on, but also if you've seen my bonnet video where I did spray the PVA, we had runs in it and little air bubbles and bits and pieces. So it's just another thing you're introducing there that will cause a problem. So here we have plain wax. We just run the light along. You can see, you know, that's nice and smooth and flat. The only things we're seeing in that where the light runs across it is, uh, you know, minor bits where the resin wasn't fully wet out as it went across. Um, so that's you know my fault in the layup, as opposed to the transfer. So that's and now it's come off pretty good. Um, can't really complain about that. And the final one we're going to look at here is our spray release agent. You can see this has a really dull um, patina to it, which makes sense because that's the patina that we had down on the on the part before. So yeah, it's it's smooth and it's flat. Uh, apparently you can paint straight over it. It will require a sand. But if you're doing a gloss part, that's not going to come off gloss. If we refer back to what we were doing before with the spray and the wipe, you know, you can see the difference there between the two of them. The spray and the wipe is much, much nicer and will just require a very minor polish to give you, you know, your final solution there. So what's our main takeaways out of this? Well, the biggest one is that the acrylic black paint I was using doesn't stick very well to that melamine and that needs to be revisited because the whole point of this activity was to see uh, if this mold release here worked better than wax at releasing from that paint, which we haven't had a chance to test. However, we can still get some things out of this. Uh, so the spray release agent works. It pops off quite well, actually. The spray with a wipe also works, which is, you know, that's beneficial. That's something to keep in mind. Um, you might even have a look at, say, two applications where you spray, wipe, let it cure, spray, wipe, let it cure. Um, wax works. We know that. That was a control, essentially. And the wax PVA is the best one uh, to come off the, the substrate. However, if we now have a look at this from usability perspectives, you know, the wax took five applications to get to where it was, and those five applications required a minimum of half an hour in between. Uh, required a minimum of half an hour between each one just to you know, let the wax fully cure before we put the next layer on. The wax and PVA required not only five applications of wax, but then two applications of PVA, which also required half an hour or so uh, for it to cure, and it still didn't give us a really nice surface finish. The spray, sprayed on immediately. Five minutes later, you can use it. The spray and wipe, same thing. We sprayed it on, we let it sit for about 30 seconds, gave it a wipe down, about five minutes later you could use it. So in terms of ease of use, this stuff wins. Like just, just hands down, this stuff wins. In terms of ease of use and then a follow-on reduction in secondary machining operations, the spray with the, the wipe off seems to work really, really well. That's, that's an amazing finish I'm looking at right now. Um, wax and PVA took a lot to get to where it is and then actually doesn't have the best surface finish on the back end of it. Like it's okay and a small sand will fix it, but it's just, it just requires more. And then wax, you're not guaranteed the same level of release as you are with wax and PVA, um, but it does have a nice finish of whatever was underneath it prior. So the most pertinent thing we can conclude from this is that my first foray into chemical release agents using this uh, particular brand 
actually has worked and it seems to have worked quite well uh, with two potential application methods. So it requires further investigation for myself before I put it onto a big mold that's you know taken a lot of time, cost a lot of money to get there. Uh, however, it, it shows potential and for you know for $27 a can for this stuff, 27 Aussie a can, um, I'm actually pretty happy uh, with where it comes out. So that's everything on this video done. So I just want to say thank you very much for your time. I hope you got something out of it. Um, if you have any comments, opinions, or anything that you think might be useful for me, please let me know down in the comments below. Uh, and if you've liked watching my videos, please consider subscribing. Otherwise, have a great day.